at last. Yeah. Make a few. What a fantastic audience. They are good, aren't they? Where do you get them from? Bortons. <laughs> I'd love to take them with me when I open up on October the 12th at the Haymarket <laughs> Theatre in London. <laughs> you shy little thing, you. Well, you see, it's been years, literally years, been ringing up your age. Now he's too busy. He can't, he can't. Now you're here. But the funny thing is, I have been watching you for years, but I don't know much about you. I don't know much about the man. How did it all start for you? The first gag I ever wrote was sort of very personal, and, uh, and that sort of got me off on that track of sort of taking what happens in real life, just exaggerating slightly. It was, because uh, at school I had, uh, I got two O-levels. Two? Yeah, maths and art. <laughs> and uh, there's not a lot you can do with maths and art. Uh, no, for a few years I was painting computers. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first gag, and then I had the nerve to go on after that. <laughs> you were one of the first comics that I saw in this country, certainly in this country, doing what we call observational humour, you know, little everyday things, not just jokes. Taking a situation and, and, and embroidering on it. Yeah, I, I've tried to, I mean, there's more truth in the comedy than you ever know. Do you know, you know I mean, you've got uh, children, they still have the sack race in British schools. Did you know that? Isn't that amazing? We're nearly into the second millennium <laughs> and we have the sack race in British <laughs> schools. Here's America wasting their time teaching their six and seven year olds how to be gold medal winners at the Olympics. <laughs> what are we teaching our kids to be? <laughs> Vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we always used to write. Do you ever used to write those notes to get out of, you know, naff sports and stuff? You ever used to oh, I used to love sports, but then I'm the yeah. odd one. Oh, well, well, I hated cross country, you know, and um, a lot of the kids used to write notes and copy their parents' handwriting, you see. So uh, I hated cross country, particularly at this school with the dogs chasing you and things. And so. <laughs> It was a December, it was really cold, and, and uh, the next day we were doing cross country. So I thought, right, what I'll do is I'll copy my dad's handwriting and write this letter. You see. And I could never get away with anything, but I spent all night copying my dad's handwriting, using all the dictionaries and stuff. And I gave the letter to the sports uh, master next day, and he opened it up and he said, Dear Mr. Cartwright, Jasper cannot do cross country today because he's just had a vasectomy. <laughs> How old were you? Thirteen. <laughs> He said, <laughs> he said uh, painful is it, Carrot? I said, I can hardly breathe. <laughs> the, the, best one, the best one was the kid in front of me. Why can't you go swimming, Bevan? Uh, time of the month, sir. <laughs> what I like about you, Jasmine, I've always liked about you, is that things that irritate you, you don't let it wash over you. You take it, you use it, make fun out of it. Yeah, things people say and stupid things they get things up to. Things people say has been a, a, um, has been a wonderful thing to use over the years, you know. And um, I remember I used to play cricket for the Lord's Tabernacle. And um, I got smacked right between the eyes with the cricket ball. I mean, really, boom. Right, yes, very funny. Thank you. <laughs> and my eyes swelled up. I was black and blue. And uh, everybody come and go, what happened to you? And you're like, I got smacked right between the eyes with the cricket ball. And they all said, you were lucky. <laughs> Did it hurt? Did it hurt? Toss spot. And then, and then, a woman said to me, oh, Jasper, oh, aren't salmon wonderful? Pardon? Oh, salmon are miraculous. Well, why? Oh. Well, every year they swim thousands of miles to the sea and they, same, they find the same river and they swim up the same river and deposit their sperm in exactly the same place. Aren't salmon miraculous? <laughs> no, no, no. One and a half million Britons go to the Costa del Sol every year and do exactly the same thing. Goldfish, I found this out in, I think it was Reader's Digest, goldfish have a memory retention of just four seconds. And I thought, what a bit of a life. And then I thought, no, no, that's why they're so happy. <laughs> yes, you see, you buy them a goldfish bowl, okay, you put a couple in there with a bit of stuff, and that's it, they're set for life. See, so that. <laughs> and the one says, hey, what's that castle? What's a castle? I don't know, why are you asking? <laughs> asking what? <laughs> I don't know, who are you? <laughs> I don't know. Look at that castle. 
Anyway, and then... Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, no. <laughs> you were gone then. <laughs> and, um, you're a married man? Yes, indeed. Uh, but are you, I was sort of asked, are you handy around the house? I mean, you do gadgets, can you do all that stuff? I'm useless. I, I, I couldn't set the... No. The, the program remote, I wouldn't know how to do it. No, but I thought, hey, hey, if you can't beat it, join it. I will join the technological age. And I bought a cordless telephone. <laughs> and now, I can't find it. <laughs> I could find the old one, it was tied to the wall. <laughs> I bought a video recorder that works exclusively by remote control, and I lost the remote control. <laughs> I have paid £475 for the digital clock in my lounge. <laughs> and what's the time? Oh, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> I'm such a crutch with these things. All my friends know. Are, are you going to buy the new Philips compact cassette system or the new Sony mini disc system? Because whichever one I choose will be obsolete by Christmas. <laughs> you are looking at Betamax, man. <laughs> I still have the original video <laughs> recorder. It is the size of Albania. I, mean, just... <laughs> I never learned. I never learned. I never learned. <laughs> Twelve months ago, I treated myself to some electronic gates for the drive. Twelve months ago. I still cannot remember that when I'm driving in, the gates open out. <laughs> My motor is like a stock car. And now, the bloke next door has had a pacemaker fitted. Every time I open the gate, he runs around the block at 90 mile an hour. Now, I know in your uh, off, or shall we say, spare time, you, you like football, and golf, football, you're a football nut, actually. Yep. You were, weren't you a director of Birmingham City for a while? Ah! <laughs> 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 the chairman, um, I mean, he's got a bit well, of a colourful background, hasn't the, he? The owners, the owners <coughs> um, are, um, the owners are David Sullivan and the Gold Brothers, mm. and, uh, and between them, they own Sunday Sport newspaper and the Ann Summers chain of sex shops. <laughs> and now, now they own Birmingham City. And uh, you've got to see this season's kit. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen crotchless shorts before. <laughs> it's a nightmare supporting them. Great tackle, Brian! Oh, do you think so? <laughs> You have to buy the program in a brown paper envelope now. <laughs> Cute pictures, aren't it? <laughs> now, you're just about, you're just about opening the West End at Haymarket. In London, yes. yes. Yeah, and um, I know you like doing that. I mean, getting it's out great. there. With Live work is, is wonderful. Just what, um, I mean, what's nice, I suppose, when you've been on the road, you know, you, you've got to eat wherever you eat. You'll be able to come out of the show now, go to the Ivy, go wherever, Savoy. But mm. on the road, it's slightly different in there in the old Happy Eater. Well, and all that. the Happy Eater, oh, the, definition, with us, the definition of a happy eater is someone who's never been in a happy eater. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes, yes, there's good restaurants in London, but they, they cost a bit. But I mean, I think restaurants are a con anyway. I mean, I think, I think we stand for the five car trick in this country, guys. I'm sorry, you know, I mean, Italian restaurants, I mean, they've caught on, you know, they've caught, I mean, you, everybody says, no, oh, oh, isn't pasta wonderful, isn't it wonderful, there's fettuccine and lasagna and spaghetti and, and, uh, it's so full of vitamins and fibre, isn't, isn't pasta wonderful? No, it's not. Have you seen the ingredients on the side of a pasta packet? Flour and water. They are charging you ten pounds for a plate of wallpaper paste. <laughs> and we stand for it. <laughs> Have you asked for a coffee in an Italian restaurant? Ah, oh, they Mr. Carrot, a coffee, yes, a cappuccino, here's a cappuccino, it's a wonderful coffee. Oh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> where's the bloody coffee? <laughs> I don't want to shave. <laughs> cappuccino, it's Italian, but here comes another mug. <laughs> But the worst ones, the worst ones, without a doubt, are those, uh, those American diner things, you know. Well, what they do is they go around the dustbins of all the other restaurants, yeah, get all the stuff and serve it to you next day. Eh? It's right, eh? Potato skins, who are you kidding? <laughs> it's potato peel, for crying out loud. <laughs> and chicken wings, chicken wings, chickens haven't flown for 10 million years! <laughs> 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 they put it in this sauce, they put a zesty sauce, I'll say it's zesty. By the time you finish, you feel as if you've given a snogging lesson to a blowtorch. You know? <laughs> and spare ribs, the sod all on spare ribs, you just then you go, Hey! Hey! 
you know what these came wrapped in? Could you bring me some of that, please? <laughs> and what sauce do they put on spare ribs? You get it on your hands, you can't get the stuff off. It would give you who a run for its money. And what do they bring you to clean it off with? A little bowl of water with a slice of lemon in? You need three gallon of Swarfiga to get this stuff off your hands. <laughs> well, 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 what about Mexican food, Mr. Cut? Well, what about Mexican food? Chili con carne, guacamole. It looks as if it's been eaten before, for crying out loud. That's where the Mexican wave comes from. Mexican restaurants. You sit in there and suddenly going, Where's the bar? It's too late. <laughs> Jasper Carroll. Fifty years ago today saw the first ever Grand Prix at Silverstone. Happy memories in this circuit next.